views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to the Mindset Makeover. During this unique show, hosts Lisa Berry and Michelle Carter accompany you on a journey of mindful thinking, true feeling, and clearing mind chatter, all to align you with deep answers and multiple possibilities that help you move forward and live in the now. You become present, clear, and unstuck, and able to live fully led by your heart. Michelle and Lisa invite you to listen and feel this transformation through vibration of word, sound, and song. Open up to what's possible and experience a shift. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mindset Makeover, What's Possible. Today is the show that Michelle and I have we're excited for and are really vibrationally power packed and ready to go. And at the same time, we're trying to keep our emotions intact. So today, Michelle, is ceremony. Ceremony. I know. It actually, I yes. love that word itself, actually. There's a vibration to it. It's funny. As as we decided to do ceremony, this is this was shocking. This is actually, I think, a life review on my part because I was thinking, okay, a ceremony, what does it mean? What are the words? What is the difference between ceremony and tradition and all this stuff? And as I really reviewed my life, I realized how how much ceremony has actually been part of my life. And I don't think I realized it until now. And now I feel like I have this relationship with ceremony that I – You know when you're present to something and and when you're younger and you're kind of in them and you're thinking, oh, gosh, will this ever end? And I'm hungry or I want to do this. I want to go play. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But out of respect for your family or whatever the event might be because, you know, we're very respectful people. Um, But I think it comes with maturity maybe and with um, a connection to oneself and life that you realize how important and what ceremony means. And that's what we're going to do right now is for this next hour, talk about ceremony and actually include one and involve everybody. And you actually said that you had a fun story that I don't know. So I'm oh, not and... <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really funny, but it, it's just about, because ceremony, you know, is a clearly, a, it can mean many, many things. Like ceremony, it doesn't necessarily have to be rituals. For some people, it's rituals, but ceremony happens in all places of our lives. It's a lot of beginnings and ends and you know like a marriage and like um a funeral um there's all sorts of ceremonies that happen and today i didn't realize like i literally i've been playing bowls a lot lately and just working with frequencies because i love that so much and i'm even more obsessed with it now than usual and so i woke up this morning (laughs) and i was like started playing the bowls and then i looked in front of me and i lit incense and i lit a candle and i i do that i really really do that every day and I didn't realize, I mean, I guess that's sort of a ritual, but it's also a ceremony. And I looked down and I didn't stage anything. It wasn't like some staged picture for Instagram. I just looked at everything and I thought, this is really pretty. I go, I've made a total little ceremony here without even knowing it. And I was just playing the bowls, just like in a really happy space. So I go to make, so now I realize this is the funny part. I realize that it's so beautiful. I'm like, I'm going to take a picture. And then jumbo feet, like, kick my tea all over the place like my tea just went flying and it was like ruined the picture but I was like it was funny because to me it was kind because ceremony can seem so serious like okay I've officiated a bunch of weddings and I all I I well a bunch too but still I've been to a billion weddings and I've sang in a million weddings a million and a billion we are going to talk about that later by the way (laughs) oh well I was just going to say that I realized by kicking the tea and you know ruining my picture, even though it didn't ruin my picture, it's just having that levity when things, you know, kind of don't go as planned. And it was silly. It was a tiny little thing. Like we always talk about this, you know, microcosm of the macro. And uh, it was just really funny because I was like, it just, it was all beautiful and serene. And then the kicking of the tea everywhere. And it is hard not to be like, (laughs) ah, and then two seconds later, I'm like, that's funny. Like, it's actually funny. And the way you just ordered that that happens so often. 
you worded that. The kicking of the teeth sounds like it's part of the ceremony. Like, all right, and we begin with the kicking, oh, and the of, kicking the- of the teeth. <laughs> oh yeah, I think it's like a I- lesson not to be so, not that I'm rigid at all with that stuff, but not to be so, because ceremony can have a certain amount of rules, but I think it just has to be yeah. what works for you. Well, As I always thought, we no. always talk about that, but. That actually really was, and I do believe, yes, I always go back to the heart of what feels good, feels good, but it was really interesting as I looked at, my mother was very rigid. Oh my, I don't know that I've met another woman as rigid. Well, I'm sure I have, but when she was alive and we did our things, it was so rigid and I'm, I kind of get the giggles. So I, I was always in trouble for some reason because giggling, not for anything bad, just giggling because I looked at mm-hmm. the word ceremony and the first thing that really comes up is the word solemnly. And I think of when people say, oh, I solemnly swear, you know, blah, 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 blah. Not, and it's just resume, but, you know, solemnly swear this and that. And it's the two words that went with it are formal and dignified. And I can see now why mm. my giggling didn't really fit in with those two words. But um, actually, it's my dad's fault because he smiles and smirks a lot because out of, you know, maybe we might be a little uncomfortable or we're just so loved and feel wrapped up in this really cool vibration that we do smile or giggle. But the word solemnly, which I love, I kind of was really, I really need to wrap my brain around the difference between ceremony and rituals or traditions or celebration even. And what I really do love is that ceremony is usually followed by celebration. And I think that's, I was mm. like, okay, good. I have a place where celebration can go after a ceremony. And I, I'm so excited to ask you so you can share with people because you actually took your love and passion of weddings, of, of the marriage, of people joining to like two people love each other it together and you took it to the next level because you became ordained and and want to perform these well, things. That's, that's, <laughs> that was not my it wasn't like I just decided to it's because two people asked me to they're like you love love so much which is true and like the only reality show I watch because I, I don't watch any shows like that is say yes to the dress because it's ridiculous and I I love I love weddings I do I love everything about and weddings you cry every and I love love oh my god I cry all the time I just I love like it was kind of funny the two weddings that I did officiate like it was hard not to cry when I'm the person officiating it but I just Aww. love, love. So, yeah, it was very funny. My um, One of my friends, the first friends that asked me, they're like, would you marry us? And I thought they were joking. I'm like, oh, you're joking? They're like, no, because you're so happy and positive and you love love so much. I'm like, that's amazing. So then I married them. And then my other friends asked me, I'm like, this is so funny. So I do, and I'm saying it many, 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 many weddings. Um, but again, I, I was, I always sang, during the ceremony like every wedding I can think of I never sang like afterwards with a band I always sang during the ceremony and again never I was just always asked to do this it was never part of like oh I'm going to set out to do it so it kind of found me right but yes I do I do love Love. You have that um, respect for that the ceremony part because you know a reception, a wedding reception is that celebration after mm. that you know let loose and and we don't have like what you had mentioned like these rules or this because I was looking into ceremony you know I I have had the wonderful opportunity of going to Japan and though I actually have been a part of multiple ceremonies in my own home which I'll I'll get into but when I did go to Japan I was able to I stayed with the monks and witnessed their morning ceremony and they do this like what you had said earlier you do this every something that we do every day and mm. I thought of it like they counted a lot they did a lot of things a certain amount of numbers like seven times mm. for this or remember when we when we when not we but when people count malabeads um you, there's 108 and why is there 108 and there's a reason for this and why is there you know this many shakes and you know when we do the our Christians do the Father Son and Holy Spirit there's three there's a certain reason why we do these numbers and I found it so interesting because ceremony really takes in symbols and um, dress like how they dress what do they wear they can't wear this not can't but you know they choose to wear one color to represent another or they may burn certain incense for certain things because of the outcome that they're oh my goodness you ready for this Michelle you ready this is going to throw you are you ready (laughs) oh my goodness I lost the word I was Googling. I, I wanted to look up a certain thing, and I Googled. And because you know I love cats, but you know I love cows. Cows are like the second to cats, right? There's a ceremony <laughs> of counting cattle. Like, there's a ceremony of counting cattle. I, I was like, what? Mm. Counting cows? Oh, this is hilarious. This is wonderful. Like, anyways, I was like, there's, there truly are ceremonies 
for pretty much everything, but it's really about mm-hmm. when you think of the word ceremony, if I were to say to you, hey, I'm having a ceremony for, and then fill in the blank, that would probably mm-hmm. say to you that I'm not celebrating, but I'm maybe making a promise or a commitment or what would you say, or uh, remembering maybe, or um, I think it can be all those things. When I think of ceremony, I do think of like, sacred and reverence and that it's that whatever a ceremony is is that you're giving reverence to that situation that you're making that important and you're making that that peace with whatever you believe I like I mean I clearly you know I'm talking to my guides all the time always doing some intention with the candles like I, I do every I don't really do anything too passively I always think about it I mean and some things may be borderline OCD because, like, I'll leave a place and I have to tap the door a certain <laughs> amount of times. But <laughs> yep, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I, was admi- I don't know. Whatever. Clinical things, I don't always agree with them. I think they're right. can be that's bigger than that. But um, you don't feel balanced until you yeah, do that. Yeah, because I don't do it out of much. craziness. I do it out of – I'm really – like, it's funny that you said numbers because I think about numbers a yeah. lot. Like, I'm very specific about numbers. Even uh, – um, my husband and I got married on a Monday <laughs> just because uh, we eloped, but we got married on a Monday because it was 813. And I really wanted to, it had to be 813. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny how. Um, it, and it does hold a vibration. Yeah. I think that's where ceremonies where they're thinking if um, they're not saying the words, oh, this vibration, but they're thinking this time of the day. Like when we do yoga poses, we have a sun salutation and we have the moon salutation. So there's even to the Mm -hmm. fact of when we do them, like what you're saying, what particular day, what number, um, how many times we do it. And does that feel balanced? Does that feel like we are giving our all, like our commitment, our present love and moments to it and our, our thought. And actually now, not that I wish I could go back, but in my mind, I'm actually revisiting all the ceremonies, even, even be at a funeral. Like, was I present mm-hmm. when I was eight and I went to a funeral? Mm-hmm. What did I witness? What did I feel? Because there is a feeling, like you mentioned the word reverence, like that, that word holds mm-hmm. such a vibration. I knew that music mm-hmm. was going to speak and I was like, oh, okay, we'll be back. <laughs> okay, that's the reverence. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. No, I don't have time for coaching. When I get into the car, I just want to hear music and drown out my problems. I don't want to talk about it. What? I've never heard of coaching music before. What do you mean coachable moments set to music? Really? In less than eight minutes, I can listen to a single track and shift my entire mindset and mood? I guess when music is set to the universal frequency of 432 hertz, anything is possible. If you're stuck, stagnant, or need a shift, get your album 8 now at 432shift.com. Welcome back to the cat show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right. A group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. All right, we left off with reverence, which I'm so glad that you brought that up, Michelle. This is, again, I have to say it again. It's such a powerful world. I can't even, I think it's because that the, 
you remember many shows ago I shared that I feel like there's masculine and feminine and a vibration to every letter and every number for me in my world of mm-hmm. like, my mm-hmm. crazy brain? <laughs> I feel like R is such like a, especially a capital R. It's like the, like such a, a, an alpha leader letter. <laughs> but with with that being said, I want, we're going to um, – we're going to share one of our songs with all the listeners, but in saying this, before we come to the end, the song is called Aligned, and we've called it Chakra Sparkle originally because we do believe it makes you all sparkly and shiny. But, Michelle, I want to share, I don't think I've ever shared this with you even. Um, when you think of ceremony, I, I know it, there's, there's lots of preparation. We usually, you know, we, there's a lot. To, like people, this is very serious. We prepare. We clean our, our environment. They're going to have like a, a house or a hall or the, a church or wherever we're going to have this. Mm-hmm. And we really prepare. We set everything up and we're ready. But the, I always used to wonder and question, what if we don't have time to prepare? What if we had to, pre- had to do a ceremony on the spot immediately because something happened that we really wanted to have that, that very solemn and, and, and that, that reverence come up for us and do this. And it was, I don't know, I, and this is good. It's kind of sad, but it's a beautiful, sad moment. I showed up to my friend's house one time um, just to visit, and, you know, fun, excited. And as I stepped into their home, their their cat had just passed away, like literally on the floor. Like that was that. I was there. And what? it was, um, oh. yes. And however, I'm going to make this really uh, quite a beautiful story. This actually changed my life. This was quite a pivotal moment. And actually, I'm going to share this. Was, this was my friend, Jordy. And it was a very, where he lives even is just very vibrationally healing and feeling. So when I'd walked in and this, this moment, of course, as a surprise happened, there was not a step missed in his motion to grab a feather and burn some certain incense to, to feather the smoke over over the over his the little little adorable little kitty's body and to do a ceremony right then and there. There was no preparation. There was no moments of time. There was just this was important and this needed to be done. Mm-hmm. And there was this love. And it was actually a, a quite a changing moment for me to say. I myself. It's a moment where I looked within myself and said, I can always be ready. I don't always need to have it perfect to create a ceremony mm-hmm. that really means something and, and, and flows through my heart and my whole body. And that's why I really love this art, the song that we, you and I put together, a Star- Chakra Sparkle and Aligned, because everybody listening, you always have it within you to do whatever ceremony that you need to do for whatever it is you want to open or close or, you know what I mean? So anyways, I want to share that story mm-hmm. with you, Michelle, and everybody too, first before hearing this, because that was that was quite a pivotal moment for me too to move into the world of I am already everything that I need to be in order to have this ceremony and, and to celebrate after. So Michelle, I'm so sorry. I just threw that one on you. (laughs) That was my, my intro to the beautiful song that we are going to share with everybody right now called Aligned or Chakra Sparkle. generously. I accept who I am and connect with the world. I stand confidently as I feel joy and peace 
expressing truthful song in harmony. I imagine and I'm creative and I'm aware of my wisdom. With my aura shining brightly, I am connected to pure bliss. Actually, um, I was going to mention that I just found out before the show that you got this really cool snazzy tuning fork. And I just wonder if... um, Oh, yes, I did. I feel like that would just hold that vibration for everybody right now still. And you can share with everybody what that is because, of course, I said, oh, what is that? Do you play it? (laughs) Oh, it's just... um, It just aligns like, like anything, really, like the crystal bowls, like... Anything, it just, so the 432, like our website, 432 shift, is, um, it, it like balance, so a tuning fork kind of balance, it's like the frequencies that balance you. So it can help put you, when you hear it, it can bring you into the frequency of 432 hertz, which um, mm-hmm. allows you in musically, it, it will allow you to absorb, um, I mean, there's all different things about it. It's like the universal frequency, but it also allows allows you to absorb um, music and sound differently. And, and it just, I, love that. I mean, it just feels good. I feel like it just aligns you as well to align. Aligns. <laughs> see, it aligns you. I love that. Obviously, that's why I was like, oh, I feel like that would be a perfect thing to he- let everybody hear um, just after hearing the song. Aligns. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'm not sure how it will sound, but either way, you and the listeners will feel the frequency. You are receiving it. So it's very subtle, but it's very magical. When you hear it by your ears, it's pretty amazing. But you can't my, hear it like my, when it's a little further away. My right ear is actually fluttering. That's so weird. Oh, wow. Oh, that is weird because I didn't hear that earlier. That's okay. Here, well, okay, let's do it one more time just to see. Oh, my gosh, because I want to do a test. <laughs> How long would that go on for? Because I, I can still feel fluttering, but now I don't know if it's just because my ears and like those cramp of fluttering. <laughs> um, it can go, it can go on for a while. Like it just depends, because like with the bowls and everything, you know. Well, actually, like we talked about before, every instrument is really based on vibration. Um, piano strings, guitar strings, vocal cords. It's all the way we make our sound. Of literally every instrument is based on vibration. Um, so the minute you stop that, like if you're playing guitar and you palm or you mute it, it's not going to have sound anymore. And the same with um, a tuning fork or a bowl or anything. Like it can be going like crazy. The minute you touch it, just stops. So they all have different resonating times. What I notice with the tuning fork, because I've only had it a couple of days. Um, that sometimes, like, I think it goes as long as it feels it needs to, which is really funny because sometimes it will last so long and I'm like, how is this thing still going? And then another time it will just be, just be a little bit. I mean, there's probably also science that how, how hard you tap it and all that stuff, but I believe yes. otherwise, I believe that it's of course. magical. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But then yeah, the person. I, I think it's some um, type of magic. And I'm not sure if you're you're flicking or strumming or pick, I don't know what the the word is that you're doing to make it sound that, but that would be also equivalent to what the you are the healer in this in this instance. So you are the one, quote unquote, playing or you know, putting your energy. You're you're absorbing what the what the universe needs, and you're saying to the, to the fork, you're saying I'm using this force at which I believe the world needs to heal to transmute this energy and this vibration right now. So that's what I'm getting in my my world. And, and really, it only matters what matters to you. Like, if that feels right to you, then that's 
then that's good. It just um, right. If you have yeah, it really doesn't. It's just, yeah, speaking, you know what's really cool is because when those when your friends had come to you and they said, We would love for you to marry us because the level at which you held love and union and marriage was something that really matched their vibration and they thought, What better person who shares that same so I love what you always you always bring this up in every show and I love that you do that, is that you always bring it back to it is up to us. It's individual it's unique but it can be shared and i think when i think of when i was looking up ceremony and i thought what brings people together in a ceremony and there are certain words and certain like oh the word program like that came out like you know a ceremony program and this is so that people can like there's certain songs like we have the wedding march for the, the wedding song or um oh my sister mm-hmm. when she was married she did ken and d and everybody you know we kind of don't so i i do believe that there's this vibration that can help you know for the lack of a better term here, we talked about cattle, or I talked about cattle earlier. It's like we can herd together, you know, like shuffle together and put mm-hmm. together people through our vibrations, through our words, through our message, through the belief, through our present moment. And I really got to give kudos to parents who really rally their kids, <laughs> such as me, <laughs> to do these things. Because <laughs> I know I'm really excited about ceremony. I'm trying to, um, because it's, of course, a highlight in my life, I'm looking around going, where can I spot ceremony what's going on olympic ceremonies the torch passing on ceremony and and there's just been so many wonderful opportunities for me to to view it and witness and even looking back and with with yourself you had a very interesting you know you grew up very interesting with your parents and you've got to witness a lot of things and i think would you say there's a lot of ceremony or was it less ceremonious and more um well, tradition, I think there was, like, uh, there was certain tradition, oh, we'll come back to that, which I think oh, tradition can go to okay. ceremony, too. Tradition when we come back, the, the differences between tradition and ceremony. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Every Tuesday on Living with Moxie, join Shefali Burns and Donna Martuge in conversations designed to take you to the next level, where we highlight ideas, resources, and strategies that provide you with the leverage you require to meet and exceed your business and personal goals. Each week on Living with Moxie, we will lead conversations related to success, achievement, fulfillment, and extraordinary, vibrant living. Are you ready to live with Moxie? Join us. This is the sound of salmonella gyrating on your undercooked chicken. And it looks like mom might be taking it out a little early. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. So use a thermometer to cook each type of meat to the right temperature. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. Yeah, so I, w- I was just asking you when you were growing up, the diff- you know, there's ceremony and then there's tradition. So, w- yes, share with us what you mm. kind of experienced there. Uh, well, it wasn't overly, definitely not overly ceremonious because they didn't grow up in a very, uh, we weren't like religious or anything. But one, one thing we did do because my mom has always been into um, all the spiritual stuff. So we've definitely, oh, actually, it, it's not, well, it was like a healing ceremony. Um, one time our little dog, Loopy, she had, she was crazy. She thought she was way bigger than she was. And she was like, had super, Superman power, but she jumped over this massive bush to chase a motorbike, trying to catch the shoelaces. She was full crazy, but the best dog. And anyway, so she had, she dislocated her hip 
And mm-hmm. this would have been like, I don't know, in the 80s sometime. And my mom got all the kids in the neighborhood. We came around and we all sat in circles and we just put our little hands over her, like just oh. in the air, and all just sent her healing vibes. And she was supposed to have surgery and then she didn't and she ended up being okay. So it was kind of amazing. And my mom used to always say, I guess I did this even when I was very little. And my mom said I would go up and, like, put my healing hands on her if she didn't heal well. So there was a lot of that. And definitely traditions, like um, Christmas and birthdays were a very big deal. And in Christmas, we always went through, I mean, even to this day, it's the same thing. Like, oh, open a gift on Christmas Eve. And then my mom pretends that, like, she did, we don't know what it is. It's always pajamas. <laughs> but it'll be like, what could it be? And then you get pajamas and we drive around and look at Christmas lights. And uh, the next morning, there would always be you know, one unwrapped gift clearly from Santa. And it was just, there's, and then we always did a uh, Dutch breakfast. Um, so any holiday we'd have Dutch breakfast, which is amazing. It's like the greatest thing ever. And, did it and feel, so, you know, know I like wonder, that, so. But it meant as much more to you still. as, yeah, but I wonder, I, I wonder if there is a fine line. I guess we, we all get to make our own, you know, definition of it. But I love what you said about when you were a kid, you know, like you often did that, but my nieces, would all the time, especially when you're younger, want to, like, I am not a big fan of touch. I have to be a admit, I'm a little bit like, ah, first of all, your hand's clean. Don't put your sticky hands on me. But they were always, they wanted to, like, do the laying on of hands. And actually, that is a very, a very Christian thing. But um, it could be other religions as well. But I know they always wanted to. I think to, it's most um, religion. Most, yeah, they want to touch you or just or hover to you, and I could always feel something from their little hands because their intention was so pure and so loving, and mm. it almost been like little tingles, like happiness vibes to your heart. <laughs> you just want to squeeze them, but <laughs> like a little kid happy there. But um, but yeah, so there's these. I wonder if there's a very fine line between tradition, um, and ceremony. I wonder. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, I, I think, think it's the again, Olympic block. like we always talk about, everything is what you choose to make of it. Like, I mean, you can, I personally have always made ceremonies. Like, I, I did it myself. It wasn't mm. ever taught to me. I've always been into creating some type of thing. Like, I've, I, I remember one time I was homesick from school, and my dad mm. was home, and he made me this um this just piece of wood, but he told me it was like magic. And so I remember that I carried that with me. It was my magic mm. wand. And I've done that with a lot of things. Like I carry crystals in my purse. Ah. I do. I've done, I mean, I, I used to be really into doing the whole violet flame ceremony every night. And I've kind of always been like that. So I think I create ah. a lot of, but then some people don't do it. And it's not, and you know, there's all sorts of books that like, you don't need to do it either. You're not going to be more, enlightened right. for doing it it's what makes you feel better I think for me like I've talked about in the past but in regards to um I still semi regret well, when I was like you know, meditate. yes yeah that what I was going to say about um uh I think for me why I like it because I like having a physical thing to give attention mm-hmm. to so that's why I and I think a lot of people, that's why, because, and mainly, I don't even know if it's really about the ceremony. It's more about where your attention is going and your intention, like you said, oh, with beautiful. the kids, when your intention, because you might be able to do it, you know, I guess if you're highly, highly enlightened, which I think when we come here to be humans, we have all sorts of human garbage to deal with too. So it's kind of nice to take a moment out and find something that works for you. And that can be meditation, that can be music, that can be, like I said before, I don't think I said it in the greatest way when I, you were like, do you meditate? And I, I, but I was like, I like to keep busy, but not busy in the sense of doing errands. I mean, like mm-hmm. when I'm crafting that's, or playing the bowls or making a bracelet, that's kind of my um, meditation. Cause it is yeah. quite Zen. Like I'm very focused when I'm doing it. And I think yeah. everybody just has to find something that works for them. And, you know, I have a lot of anxiety, actually, and I've always had a lot of anxiety. So I feel like, and I don't want to, obviously, who wants to have anxiety, but I feel like I have right. to do, and part of it, part of it's just being a really sensitive person and trying to, you I know, call function I, in this I, planet. 
I think I've actually liked to re, I've recoined, like re, re-termed and recoined this ter- uh, anxiety to, in my mind, I always hear it as energy. You have a lot of energy and you're just looking for the right outlet. And let's, until you find that outlet mm-hmm. where it can, it can, you know, it's kinetic energy, like an elastic band ready to like be yeah. zapped. But, um, and I love that you said the attention. In fact, again, I like that. You That's talked about my- yeah, and it makes me so not like I'm I'm wrong or I have this weird thing about me, but exactly enough, because anxiety but, seems really yeah. negative, and that's a nice way because it is yeah. energetic. Because you know you can channel your anxiety to something positive. It's just when you might be exactly. out of balance, it comes across as being like freaking out. But I do think that's why sensitive people, especially, which I all think we're sensitive to a degree, they might need yes. little rituals or ceremony that much more. Because for me, it calms me down. Um, just having you know, something, fact, I, even I holding a crystal. <laughs> You know that you're making my mother very happy in her in her other energetic afterlife state because right now I would like to say, Mom, again you were right <laughs> because I can hear her right now saying, See Lisa, I told you that all that energy you should have had for more ceremonious activities because <laughs> and oftentimes I remember this right now because you just said about crafting. So my mother, she had, she experienced pain every moment of her waking life and sleeping life actually, but she she did the most intricate crafts and one of the things she did um mm. she uh i I'm, i don't believe the word is embroidered but it's something similar to embroidery and in fact i i would die right now she's heard me saying this because he's like lisa i embroidered but anyways i believe it was embroidered she used to do these most time consuming pieces elaborate pictures very for, for our ceremonies that we would perform as a family through the religion that we had created and i would I would sit beside her very respectfully and say to her, I don't know how you can sit there and just take the time to do that. It took you like three years to make this. And like, I can't even imagine anything taking me longer than an hour. So I, there was oftentimes, I think what you're, I really am getting what you're saying now and it's changing my perspective right now, that when you place your attention on something um, that can be very helpful and very grounding and very, and also provide an outlet so ceremony in a weird, in an interesting, can you imagine a ceremony with nothing, N- no colors, no clothes, no counting, no feathers, no smoke, no things. So, like, can you imagine there'd be nothing? So perhaps, mm. perhaps, just putting it out there, maybe a ceremony does have all these really neat little things so that we can place our attention on different aspects. I think that's exactly what it is. <gasps> I think oh that's exactly God. what it is. And also, too, ceremonies have existed from the beginning of time. Like, yeah. this is nothing new and I feel that's why we might need more of it because we do need more of a connection with the other realms and it allows us to communicate I think because we get out of our head like we're very ceremonies always existed there is not a culture that an entombed culture that has not had a ceremony all all native cultures have ceremonies all well, yes. every culture does really and it's yes. um I mean, parades are ceremony. When you think of more modern cultures, like yes, parades are ceremonies. Like any type of, you know, people do ceremonies for rain. They do ceremonies for fertility, ceremonies for, like, it, it's literally since the beginning of time, since there was people, this has always been the case. So there can't, I mean, it can't, they have to be on to something. Like, why do you, like, I think, but it's exactly yes. what you said. Like, I've been really into candle ceremonies the past month because there's been a lot of change yeah. in both our lives, as you know. There's been a lot of change. Yeah. And I, I've been into these candle ceremonies, and I don't know if I mentioned them in previous show, but what's so great about them, because there's this magical store that's just a couple blocks away from my house, and you can get these. They anoint, they, I think it's called anoint, the candles with special oils that are all, um, they can be about, anything really that you want to attract or desire or clear, whatever it is. But the great thing is is you light these candles at a certain time and then it has to burn until there is no more. And I guess this is a very, I mean, this is a long time. This is an old time ritual. And I realized, yes, it's about the candle clearly holds power, but it's not so much about the candle. It's the attention, intention and attention to the candle because whatever you're thinking about is going there and it's giving that place a vessel and a vessel for release, I think. So that's why, like I had two clearing candles and oh, they were so beautiful. They were rainbows and he put all these sparkles on them. It was really amazing. They were so beautiful. And as they burnt down each layer, it was like clearing chakras. And then you just leave it burning for like, it literally burns for days. So you have to be, I mean, 
I would what a visualization because I didn't want to forget. <gasps> and it and it was totally that, about like I do it. believe. Yeah, and I definitely believe in magic for sure. So I'm all for the magic. But I also realized the other side of it was just giving the intention to it, and that, and it would help. It really, I felt things release. I felt things clearing. And you know, to me, not it doesn't work for everybody, but to me, I love tarot readings, and I love going to psychics, and I love all the right people. Not, but I love all that stuff, and that's a sense of ceremony too. I love doing cards. Um, all that stuff and we're, we're all different what makes us work and sometimes it takes a while to find out what you like you might go to a bunch of things and be like oh that's for me that's not for me and this yoga class is for me that's not for me but then you find out what works for you and most of my ceremonies i've made up like almost 100 percent of yes. them. like i don't really it's i'm not one to go look on the internet and find stuff i just make them up i'm like well everything has to be well, made up I'm, at some point <laughs> well you know how you know how i love words so much I was just listening to what you were saying about how we just were um, interchanging the word intention and attention. And then we were, because I love magic and you love magic. Are you ready for this? I might, I hopefully will blow you away with this one. Ready? <laughs> intention starts with the letter I, attention starts with the letter A, and magic starts with the letter M, which is I am, which I love. And I talk Oh my God, words. you're so cute. <laughs> so, well, see, there is a prime right now, example. There is a prime yeah. That is a prime what? example, what? though, of the difference. Well, because you listen and dissect every single word and letter all the time, and I don't even think about that. Like, I mean, I don't even listen to, I rarely listen to lyrics and songs. Like, it will take me a while to listen to lyrics, and it will be more about feel, and I sit there and listen to every sound. And when I'm watching a TV Hungry. show, often I'm listening to the background music, and, which is weird. Like, I'll listen to what's in the background of the scene. Yeah. And, uh it's it's just so funny how like how we are is innate in everything we do like I really I don't think of words that much even though I do write songs and that stuff but I'm I yeah, it's so much such more a about vibration. the intention I and you find and for you it's yeah and, and that's not relevant <laughs> to me at all so I just think it's so that kind of even goes the ceremony there how different we are yeah. in finding out what works for you I love the individuality when we return we're going to hear a fabulous song that holds vibration of word sight and sound and song and everything. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Aliyah, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg roll showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Well, that was just a playful moment before the commercial break. <laughs> We're having so much fun with that. <laughs> but we, oh, my goodness. And you know what? You're right. I love the uniqueness that we each hold, and it's so important. And I, I 
I'm just turning to a mum show almost. I feel such um, I feel such apologies coming from my heart for how I well she understands completely, which I'm sure she did. How I I wasn't ever disrespectful, but I might have been a little bit of a poo poo on it. Like, oh come on, you don't need to spend that much time, or it doesn't matter. That was my thing. I wish I could actually, if there was a retraction of statement that I could like do a blanket thing over Lisa's life, would be it doesn't matter because mm. everything matters to the person that it matters yeah. to, <laughs> and. That's so true. And also forgiveness. Sorry, like to forgive yourself for not, because it's so easy to go back. I mean, I think this is where some of my anxiety comes from, to go back and be like, oh, I wish I didn't say that. or (laughs) But you also sometimes have to, like I go through a constant, like on daily repeat of the whole Pono Pono. That's a a ceremony in itself. I'm I'm constantly doing it because it's so easy to go back. And the thing is, you can't change the fat past, but you can change your perception of it. And you can heal. I think you can go back and heal things. And clearly your mom on the other side is not. She probably sees things very differently from her human self, too. Even though she's still the same personality, she probably is like, oh, Lisa, don't worry. It's okay. Like, it's also, like I think yes. they probably look at her and they're like, calm down, people. That's what I always think my mom is telling me. Just chill out. Calm down. Just yeah. chill out. And they're like, laughing at us going, you, they're, now they're in their position saying, no, you don't worry about it. No, it's okay. Cause, you know, <laughs> I pull, I'm mm-hmm. holding her in a static picture. And I wanted to just highlight before we, because we have this most amazing, one of my favorite songs that we've ever done together. But this was this was you, actually. We are going to play it. But I do want to make take the special moment to appreciate you, Michelle. Michelle Carter from Lisa Berry. <laughs> and I love that you just brought up Polo Pano on uh, on this very special episode because that is how we met and that is the mm-hmm. oh I'm so glad and so happy that you actually just said that that is a ceremony and in and of itself I never worded it that way I never thought that that way but I'm so appreciative of you right now for saying that because it is and you and I did connect that way and we will always forever be mm-hmm. connected that way and it is very ceremonious and it is about love and mm-hmm. that's why when you did for love and I forgiveness could, could, and kindness and yeah. sorry compassion I, you off. I just got excited You're right. yeah and having compassion for yourself <laughs> though like that's I think everything we do and everything we say is something that we usually need to hear, you know, that we, like often, like I find in teaching, I learn so much more and in doing healing and songs and all that stuff, constantly learning something and doing this show has been so helpful. Like we've talked about topics that were so great to talk about and and think about and have different perspectives because we have different perspectives on things and guests have different perspectives and it's just uh I'm, I'm very grateful for all that. Just a lot of a lot of love and gratitude, and just being. I know. I think like Mondays Mondays have actually been ceremonious. It's like a ceremony. It's like one mm-hmm. o'clock Monday Eastern time, or you know, ten o'clock in your world Pacific time. <laughs> Which is so amazing, so amazing. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. I'm just getting so excited. <laughs> no, no. What's, I want to hear what's amazing. What's amazing. Well, because I used to hate. I used to hate Mondays. Like I would wake up and have like true panic attacks every Monday. Like it was, it was crazy. It was for years too. And I don't know where it came from. And then with 813, when Ben and I got married and it was a Monday, it felt like that was even more of, I was like, oh, this will heal the Mondays. And that this show happened to fall on the Mondays. And I have a totally different perception of Mondays now. And I don't know where it came from. Like I would love to make sense because it wasn't like, oh, Mondays, I got to go to a job. I've barely ever had a real job. So it's not like that's never been the case. It was like a different, <laughs> different sense. So now uh, I feel Mondays have been healed in my life. <laughs> and you know what? So I can't believe this is coming up right now. This is actually magical. Are you ready? Before we listen to our love song, the four love song. Are you ready? I can't believe this is happening. Eric, my ex-husband and I, Eric and I, rescued cats for years. We've we've rescued a lot of cats, and one of the kitties that was very a very like I went after to rescue, actually stole this cat from some, from some very not nice people that were doing bad behavior. Um, we named that cat Monday. Her name was Monday. Her name was Monday. Oh. We named her and we had her for a decade after that. And she, it took a lot of love to get close to that little kitty's uh, heart and everything. But she eventually opened up and she just, 
she just loved her life. She lived as a princess, and her name was Monday. Aww. And I've never Aww. thought of that this entire time. Oh, and she was, you know what? She was the opposite of Scott, your little kitty, because she was all black with just a tiny bit of white here and there. But she was just a gorgeous little kitty cat, and her name was Monday. So with that, I would love to share um, your beautiful angelic voice on this song, For Love, as it, as it truly shares that vibration with all of us. Ceremony or not, this is love. This is uh, we'd love to share this with you. So it's for love. To me, that's being, like, bathed in the sound of love. Aww. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I love that song. I know. It's such a beautiful note. When you, Michelle, you do sound off uh, regularly enough now because you do them with the, um, mm-hmm. oh, shoot. What is that called? Oh, goodness. I'm going to remember. Oh, what's yeah. that group that you did that with on the beach with Chandra? Oh, the, 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 uh, the, the um, Veterans Wellness Project. Veterans. Yeah, and I've done a bunch of, we've done a bunch of other sound baths, too. I really, really, and I do a daily sound bath for myself right now. <laughs> yes, and so when when we think about that, um, okay, I'm throwing this out there. It's totally a creative question on the spur of the moment because of this. So sometimes I'll think, I really need a bath. And I'm not a I'm not a super bathy kind of person, but sometimes I'll really look forward to it. And even as I'm running the bath, by the way, through my filtered ball that is beautiful, <laughs> and I'm anticipating, I'm looking forward to this, and I'm thinking about what will I put in the water? Am I going to put essential oil? Am I going to put in bubbles? Am I going to put – so this is – it, it almost is a, a ceremony. Now, when we think of a sound bath, mm-hmm. like I just felt like I was being bathed in the sound of that song right there. and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, that's exactly when we're looking for, I, and I just wondered, is, is that the like, ceremony? I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not the queen of ceremony. I have no idea, you know, I had to, to lead a ceremony or anything. But when I think of something that, that's very solemn or I want to pay homage to, or I want to I connect with, or I want to be present in, and say it's even that bath, I want all those little elements to be there for me, supporting me, comforting me, making me feel safe, allowing me to feel free, just like you say in that song, to be free of worry, of fear, of doubt, of judgment. And I wonder if that's maybe something that even as we close off our show, to say that 
if anybody and everybody can find that place, like just find, oh my goodness, Michelle, may I share the verse that I wrote to one of the songs, which we have not yet written, but we will write together and do together and share with everybody together. Yes. But, okay, do you remember that, that very celtic one? Okay, so I'm going to share this with it's just one mm-hmm. little verse, and it was, find a place, if you're any kind of a place, find a place and make a space to hear your heart share its grace. When you hear your message clear, that's when you know you've come back home. And hopefully when everybody thinks of coming back home, they do feel comforted and safe and loved. And I just feel that when I listen to that For Love song, which is on our album eight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I do, I would love to still record that song with you, Michelle, because it's so beautiful. (laughs) Oh, yes, of course. So when you do those veterans sound bath. Are they coming for ceremony? Are they coming for healing? What is everybody coming for a different reason? Oh, uh, well, those ones. For to hear from you? Well, we've done a lot of other sound baths, but those ones specifically aren't really sound baths. They're more like just, they are sound baths, but it's just people will be getting acupuncture and just enjoying a day at the beach. And then we'll, we'll be treatment, playing a gong and bowls. And then there's sometimes, no, all every time there's been a meditation as well. Um, so mm-hmm. it's really, so the, the music's kind of, it's a little different than a sound bath because a sound bath would be, you'd be laying there on the ground and you'd be thinking, I mean, you wouldn't be thinking, you'd just be laying there and you really are being bathed. And with that one, it's been a lot, it's been kind of like just playing and feeling, oh, it's over. You know what? <laughs> That's what our shows have all been about is healing. So come to forthreakdouchedeath.com for any healing that you would like to, and you know what, Michelle and I will be back sooner than later and get to share all these beautiful things with you. So everybody, 432 Shift, we have been so much welcomed in all of your hearts. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Brazil. I love you so much. I love you so much, Alisa. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.